Hello and welcome to CMC Markets on Thursday the 21st of September and this quick preview of the week beginning the 25th of September. Um, we've seen more record highs for US markets. We've seen the Federal Reserve um, keep the optionality of a December rate rise on the table and that has seen the dollar um, undergo a modest rebound. But ultimately I think this particular week is going to really be about absorbing what's taking place in Germany and the German elections and what sort of coalition that Angela Merkel will be able to put together in the aftermath of the Sunday vote. At the moment it's not really there's not really any doubt I think that Angela Merkel will win a fourth term. I think the doubts start to come about with respect to the type of the coalition that she's able to put together and ultimately that could have a significant um, that could have significant repercussions for the EU and the relationship between Germany and France over the course of the next few months. It's certainly no secret that Emmanuel Macron, the President of France, wants to put together um, some EU reforms and certainly in the context of an, a Eurozone budget, potentially a Eurozone finance minister and certainly Angela Merkel has gone to great lengths not to rule that out. But ultimately her room for manoeuvre will be dictated by her coalition partners and ultimately if the FDP um, come, into the, come into the mix and hold the balance of power then certainly the types of reforms that Mr Macron wants to bring in will be that much harder to put together and I think as a result we could find that it takes quite some time to put together a new German government even if we know what the probable mathematics and the arithmetic is in the aftermath of the Sunday vote but I think for the most part I think most of the attention for this coming week will be on US and UK GDP, the final revisions there. Those numbers are coming out at the back end of the week, but also the latest inflation data, not only from the United States, but also the European Union. And that could have significant consequences for the next direction or the next, the next move in euro dollar, as we can see from this chart here. Now, looking at this chart, there's potential for a triple top forming here. We've had a sideways consolidation pretty much since the end of August and those highs around about 120 are really proving to be a significant barrier to further progress but we also have significant support coming in around about the 11820 area. So if we look at the distance between these two points here, the 12070 level here and the lows around about 11820, that's round about 250 points. So if we get a breakdown below the 11820 area, then there's significant chance that we could see a 250 point correction down to around about 116, 115 and a half. That being said, if we're able to get a consolidated break above the 120, 20, 120, 30 area and are able to hold above that level, and I think that's particularly key in this instance, if we're able to hold above that level, then we could well see uh, a significantly um, similar gain um, towards the upside, towards around about 122 and a half, 123. So let's look at what we're expecting next week in terms of the latest inflation numbers. Certainly EU CPI um, for August was confirmed at 1.5%. That, that was a significant increase to the 1.3% that we saw in July. And this coming week we're going to get the latest flash number for September. So that will be an early indication of the type of inflationary pressure that we've seen in the month of September. And furthermore, on the Friday, we'll be getting the latest US PCE number. Now, PCE is the Fed's preferred measure of inflation. And at last week's FOMC um, rate decision, there were no surprises. We found that the Fed is, is pulling, pulling the starting gun, firing the starting gun on its balance sheet reduction program. And that will start in August of $10 billion, $6 billion dollars of treasuries and $4 billion of mortgage-backed securities. Now that's not really unexpected. I think what was surprising was the Federal Reserve downgraded its inflation forecast while at the same time upgrading its growth, its growth forecasts, which seemed rather counterintuitive to me simply because, and not only because of the concerns about Hurricane Irma, Hurricane Harvey, and potentially we could also find Hurricane Maria added to the mix in the coming months. Not only because of that, but also because of the fact that retail sales for August posted a significant decline 
um, in the month of August. But not only that, we saw significant down revisions to June and July. Now, that's going to have a significant impact on the final US GDP revision, I think, going forward, certainly in terms of the June number, because that will basically take in the end of the second quarter um, for the US GDP revision. Now, that's expected to come in around about 3%. Don't be surprised if actually that comes in a little bit lower. Certainly in terms of third quarter GDP, that is tracking well below the numbers that we saw in Q2. Now, the Fed has given indications that it still remains on course to raise rates in December. I think a lot will depend on the data as we go forward. And a lot will also depend on, obviously, who's left on the FOMC committee going forward. So I think we're going to have to pay close attention to the data, pay close attention to the inflation numbers. And certainly, I think, look at reconciling any potential damage or hit to the economy as a result of the US hurricane season. Other things to keep an eye out for this week, obviously we've talked about inflation, we've talked about um, the mathematics for the German election and we've talked about UK second quarter GDP. That's expected to come in around about 0.3% and ultimately Q3 GDP at the moment is tracking along similar lines and obviously we're also talking about the potential for a Bank of England rate hike also at some point before the end of this year. None of the data thus far has really ruled out the prospect that that will happen. Retail sales are very positive and that would appear to suggest to me that even if we get a rebound in the dollar, I think the downside in terms of the pound is going to come in around about the 134 level. And we can really see that. I think it's borne out on this chart here. We have seen a significant move higher um, and, a, and a new a multi-month high of around about 136.5. But until I think we break below this series of lows through here, around about 134.20, 134, then ultimately I think there is a good chance we could start to wedge higher. But even if we do break below 134, we've also got a decent area of support at 133. And if the pound does start to drift lower over the course of the next few days, that's going to be broadly supportive for the FTSE 100, which is broken below that key long-term support level of 7,300 and is now capping subsequent rebounds. If it's unable to get back above 7,300, then there's a good chance we're going to come back and track towards the April lows around about 7,100. So that's it for this week. Thanks very much for listening. This is Michael Houston talking to you from CMC Markets.